All right, here's a little Pontiac Le Mans, I think it is. Uh, just finishing up on it. It's a 70 model, I think. And came to me, had a F5 tech or however you want to call it on here. Very poorly installed. Um, just didn't, didn't run. Was loading up, running real rich and everything. The battery cables weren't long enough and just just a poor installation. Um, the dipstick tube, they actually had a, took a real metal dipstick tube, cut it, hose clamped, uh, like heater hose, and then came up here and then shoved the top piece of metal in, clamped it with another hose clamp, and then had the factory dipstick tube in it. And now that we have the correct dipstick tube in it, uh, it's not touching the stick. So it was showing it had fluid and everything before. Um, I mounted the holly under here. It was the easiest place to put it. Probably not the cleanest, but um, trying to find a place to go through the firewall. I don't want to. It was just a lot easier than the harness, you know, laid over. Not as clean as I'd like it to be, but you know, it's works. Um, got our all the holly relays. Um, uh, I ran this relay because I couldn't find a, a wire in this car anywhere that kept power and run and start. So I tried it with just a relay initially pulling from the starter wire, so the starter wire would trigger it and back feed the wire on the holly and so it would it would maintain power in the start position and allow it to crank up but it it was back feeding through the relay so i had to buy i ordered some a diode off of amazon and put it on there on the side coming out of the relay going into the holly which only allows current to go one way so because before the way it was set up, you had to use a switch under the dash to turn it on to power it, to crank it. So now it's all done on and off by the key. Um, this wonderful uh, quality, only the best intake. Um, I mean, only the fastest cars run this intake. But anyway, they had, uh, it was a stock, 21 pound injector in it and they had spacers just you know to space the injector to fit the height on the tab and i've never seen this done before but they put the spacers on the bottom side of the injector so you know the the spacer has just a really tiny hole down at the bottom so i mean it was really screwing the spray pattern you know it had to be so I got rid of the spacers. We got some uh, Holly injectors. Uh, they're the shorter ones, LS3 style. So I put those in and then took the brackets that were on there and marked it and drilled the holes, you know, to get rid of the spacer, clean that up a little bit. Um, the coil packs, they were actually still on the stock bracket and bolted to this and then when i was looking at it i was like wait a minute this bolt pattern is for the coil packs somebody paid the money for the valve covers and then weren't utilizing them the way they should be so i took uh took them off the bracket and then you know they bolt to the valve cover of course after i do all that and get it running then this valve cover is leaking of course so i had to pull all the coil packs off because all the bolts to the valve cover are underneath the coil packs to hide the bolts so had to pull that off you know clean up the gasket it was real oily and nasty but it was a new gasket so i cleaned it up um, put it back on resealed it a lot of the the plug wires were touching the headers so i had to get some different ones i had out of my stash of plug wires got those on there put some heat uh tubing over them and the belt routing is completely wrong i was trying to find on ict you know to see 
the spacing and all because the belt keeps moving and stuff so anyway i got to look and and uh and in their picture i was like wait a minute this the belt on this one goes over and under the throttle body but it this is actually supposed to come down below the water pump so it's the wrong belt so I, when i tried to put it on correctly it was just the belt's way too long the power steering hoses weren't even hooked up and they were cranking it up and running it without any power steering in it so it's amazing that it didn't tear that pump up um a lot of this stuff was already was done when i got the car when it was brought to me and you know i just tried to tidy it up best i could with what i had to work with and just get it running um you know with the holly get the fuel fire tech off or whatever yeah it wasn't fuel tech um but that didn't have any exhaust on it and it, it had two two o twos in it going to the the fire tech so um you know i don't know i guess they had dual wide bands or whatever but anyway but you know i mean obviously with the o2 you know and this much pipe after the header it's not going to run properly and get your air fuel ratio right because it's and trannulating that air with the, from an open header so plus you couldn't hear yourself think so he brought me some exhaust that, that was under the car at one point in its life and i just cut it up and made it fit um, these headers and fit under the car so i could have some pipe behind the o2 and quieten it down and everything so you know i just hung that under there um the fuel system things already you know somebody put a vet filter up here and it's got a dr evil fuel pump and first time i drove it and came back it was just pouring gas out from underneath it so i guess they hadn't heard of uh efi rated fuel hose so i had to pull that off and fix all that garbage and um and then the brakes the brakes i mean it's got some what are those bear bear brakes and i mean it stopped you know like a four drum four drum brake car i mean or worse i mean it was horrible i was just <laughs> trying to get the car back to the house as quickly as i could without dying no they didn't have the steam vent hooked up uh, they had grounded a wire with a self-tapper that had a rubber grommet on it um you know just just a very quality job uh, the radiator cap that they had on it wasn't keeping pressure so it was leaking out of there this top hose you know these i hate these hoses um they're just it's not the right app I, I don't like them you know they might fit and work and it's easy to go buy one but when i when i do one i try to look up and find out which hose a molded hose fits because on this side it was leaking as soon as you know i put some water in it and got it running and everything and i thought it was a water pump or whatever so i was like well it's a brand new pump you know i don't think it's coming out of the wheat pole so you know i was trying to locate exactly where it was coming from and it was from that upper hose so got that stopped leaking and like i say just it was a mess when it came in so now it kind of cranks up and run and, and drive itself down the road hook the power steering hoses up um and that's about it under here i think it's got a four finger in it um i made this little shifter shifter mount for it mount the shifter right there Got good placement and everything. We'll see if it'll crank up.
and I just did the basic um, wizard on it um, for the startup thing. So, okay. Um, oh, I did change it to where the fan is on a, an output, so it, it won't, because I hate the way that the, the default electric fan one and two is set up, how it's just temperature based and anytime there's key to the thing, it just runs the fan. That, so I set it up where it won't, the fan won't engage unless it's above 400 RPM. So, you know, it's not trying to run the fan while you're starting it. Um, I, I have it turn off above 45 mile an hour and then, you know, come on at the 10 degrees above the thermostat so that's how i have that set up because like i say i don't like the canned electric fan set up so anyway that's about it this about it for this one i don't know i'm done with it <laughs> i don't know what else he wants to do with it when i'm done with it and then there's the little burnout truck it's a little turbo six liter 4l80 Trans brake, etc. That's it for this one.